Hi folks, Ken Everett from Digital Matter here. It seems like ages since we've done one of these videos, so I'm really excited to be speaking to you today about uh, some updates we're making to our Hawk product line. A bit of legal in terms of some of the forward-looking statements that I'm going to be talking through. Um, I'll leave you to read through that. Jumping right in, what's new? The Hawk Maker model is a model that we're introducing that really just gives you flexibility to buy what you need. Uh, we're also introducing an option to allow you to connect primary cell uh, batteries to Hawk. There's a couple of power saving options there that we've put in. Um, there's a new housing color update. We've got a new uh, housing that incorporates D cells into it, which we'll get into in more detail. We've got new IO cards coming. We've got some advanced features that I'd like to talk through and some future plans about where we're going with the whole product range. The Hawk Maker model is really just in response to clients asking for more flexibility around the products that they buy from us. So in this case with the Hawk, it boils down to simply selecting the IO card that you want, which is really a decision you make based on the sensors that you're trying to read. You can then select the housing that you want, which uh, at the moment is the Hawk LiPo rechargeable battery uh, pack in the, in the current Hawk housing. And we've got our new Hawk 2D housing, which we'll talk about in more detail. And you've got a third option, which is basically don't buy housing from us. Use your own or some other off-the-shelf housing that you might have. And then obviously you can buy the Hawk base PCB separately. Um, and we may have future versions of this, which we'll talk about a bit later. One of the changes that we're slipstreaming into production is a housing color change for the Hawk. We're changing from black to a Porsche gray, we like to call it. Um, the basic idea is that the black housing just gets hot when it's in the sun and we're trying to keep things cooler. This will prolong the battery life of the batteries inside the housing and it will also obviously allow the board to just optim uh, run more optimally at a, a cooler temperature. Um, if you are worried about this color change, we can still do custom color runs. And if you want to get it shot in some really weird color, um, have a chat to us. There is an MOQ in terms of making these housings. But if you need something custom, we're happy to have a discussion with you. That leads me right into the Hawk 2D housing, which is a new, brand new housing that we're tooling for at the moment. The customer feedback that we've got is that it's all fine and well having an internal uh, large lithium polymer battery that is rechargeable by an external power source or a solar panel, but customers are asking for a compact solution that they can deploy over multiple years without having to touch the installation, right? And the installation doesn't necessarily lend itself to having some form of external power or a solar panel that you can use to top up the charge on the uh, internal rechargeable battery. So, you know, various uh, examples come to mind, even things like installing them in a sewer system or underneath a manhole cover or floating on a buoy in the middle of a dam. It might be um, difficult to do that with external power or a solar panel. So the the Hawk 2D housing gets its name from the fact that the housing incorporates two D-cell batteries. So D-cells are really, really big. You're talking typically like 18,000 milliamp hours, which is a huge amount of energy in there. Um, and we've designed the housing to incorporate those two D-cells, so obviously with the battery terminal clips, in a secure way that they're not going to rattle around or shake around. And the, the wiring basically just gets wired into the standard the external on the, on the terminal strip. Um, so the, the PCB is the same, um, so you now have your choice of whether you want to use the rechargeable uh, LiPo battery pack housing, which is slightly uh, smaller because you don't need to accommodate these D-cells in there, or the Hawk 2D housing. Um, the housing itself is the same rugged RP68 design with a core vent and uh, works the same way as the current housing. Um, as I mentioned, tooling is, is in progress today. Uh, we're expecting the first samples uh, by mid to late July, so uh, look forward to getting getting those going and getting those out there. One of the key concepts with the Hawk is the versatility of the IO cards that we've got there. The IO cards themselves determine the actual electrical and functionality interface to the sensors. So that the same baseboard can be used and we plug in whichever IO card that you need for the sensors you want to talk to. So essentially this gives us unlimited sensor options. Uh, we have now got six different card types uh, in stock or coming soon. They're named after their primary function, but I urge you to go and check the actual specifications because a lot of these things have got a bunch of other uh, IO capabilities on them that we can't just mention in the name. 
So there's the list of them. Um, AgTech 1 was our first card that we bought out. AgTech 2 um, added some analog inputs in there. Uh, RS1 is a card that does RS-485 talking to uh, Modbus sensors. We've got a serial card coming soon. We've got a multi-digital input card uh, coming very soon. And we've also got a Bluetooth card, which will allow you to talk to Bluetooth sensors and Bluetooth tags. And the Bluetooth card itself obviously has a lot of IOs on it as well. So check the specs on the website if any of those um, spark your interest. And then really just to reiterate, if you need something specific, please talk to us. We can do custom cards. Generally, there is an MOQ. Um, the numbers need to justify doing a custom card development. But if there's a gap in our card lineup, then we'd like to hear about it. So, so please give us that feedback. One of the things I wanted to just talk about was sensor power. And it's a, a feature of the Hawk that I don't know that a lot of people are aware of. When we designed it, we basically wanted to make it as easy as possible for you to connect your sensors. So the cards have got uh, various options for actually powering your sensors. So you don't need to wire up external battery packs or chargers or anything. The Hawk has that capability to actually power all your sensors for you. So some of the common scenarios are 3.3 uh, volts for sensors, particularly I squared C generally operates at that level, external temperature, humidity, that type of sensor. And then for other sensors, we've got the option of a boost regulator on most of our cards that you can select in, uh, in the parameters to either boost to 5 volts or boost to 12 volts. And that power is coming from uh, the battery pack or the external power, uh, depending on what is connected on the Hawk. So the 12 volts in particular is handy for long cable runs. So for example, in agriculture, using SDR12 soil moisture probes and other types of sensors, um, you may have voltage drop over long lengths of cable, and the 12 volt just gives you a bit more headroom to be able to power the sensors from that. One of the other advanced features in the Hawk that I don't think a lot of people have um, been made aware of is advanced task management. So this is really where you want the Hawk to do more than just monitor sensors and report their values periodically. So what it allows us to do is set up process control that runs locally on the device. So it'll operate even when you're out of coverage if, if you're in a dodgy coverage area. Um, and th the way we do this is using what we call input monitors. So it's, again, through the parameters on Device Manager, you can set up multiple input monitors to either run tasks and or uploads on uh, digital input changes and on analog thresholds. And there's a couple of options around those thresholds, min, max, and other options that you can set up. Um, this allows, it's, it's kind of a simple concept, but it allows you to actually do some quite um, sophisticated stuff on the device. So one of the examples is, you know, you may be wanting to sample temperature very rapidly, but only actually action and upload and some kind of event when you're actually out of um, temp threshold, for example. Another example is monitoring tank level, and you may want to be slightly more sophisticated in terms of process control to actually control a pump. Based on the tank level, I either want to turn the pump on or off, depending on whether I need to top the tank up or not. Um, you may want to do something in reaction to an actual event that occurs, like sending an alert. If you're monitoring a, a trap door on say, a remote animal trap, uh, you want to be notified as soon as the trap door closes. And the other idea was to potentially turn on a warning light or some kind of notification siren locally when something happens. So your fridge is out of spec, a yellow flashing warning light could go on to alert people locally that, hey, this thing, uh, the temperature in the medical fridge has risen above a threshold. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of examples here, but I just wanted to point out that this is quite a nice feature that is available on the Hawk to do quite sophisticated um, monitoring. Now, I've mentioned being able to configure your devices and the parameters to do all of these advanced functions, and just wanted to point out again that you know, our Digital Matter Device Management Platform, previously called OEM Server, allows you to manage all of your devices over the air. And that's a, a feature that we kind of take for granted once you start using it, but it really is extremely powerful in terms of how you want to manage and deploy your devices. Um, so again, all the parameters that we define for the device can be set up through Device Manager. You can templatize these and you can deploy them to uh, multiple devices, so on scale. You can also do some remote debugging, to try and identify if there's some kind of problem on the device. And then of course, you can push your data to whichever endpoint that uh, you need to send it to. I want to take a moment just talk about some of our plans and where we're headed in the future. Right now we have stock of uh, the Hawk devices and we've got a healthy production pipeline. Um, the supply chain woes that we were having last year, uh, happy to say, are well and truly over. And we've got a healthy stock of components in our warehouse. 
Um, the plan is obviously to keep building up our IO card library. These are the, uh, the versatile Swiss Army knife, if you like, features of the Hawk in terms of it allowing to connect with any kind of um, sensors that you might want to interface to. Um, there are obviously more advanced things we can do on those cards if needs be as well, including custom cards. So if you have a requirement for something specific, um, and obviously if the, the volumes justify it, then have a discussion with us. The other thing I'd like to talk about is custom devices. Um, in the IoT world, there's definitely no one size fits all for, for uh, products. And we're very open to having a discussion around you know, if you have a specific custom requirement. And especially if the volumes justify it, a custom device might make the price point uh, lower for you. And it might allow us to do something that you, if you have some kind of special requirement, please chat to us about it. The other plan that we have is to do a satellite version of the Hawk um, baseboard. We were uh, quite far down the line with a company called Swarm, owned by SpaceX, um, using their VHF radio. Um, there's certain challenges that I can't go into there as we're under NDA, but um, we've decided to essentially wait for the next version of that constellation, which is coming from SpaceX. And um, we're on their beta program. We can't talk too much about uh, the details of that, but we're hoping to have a Hawk satellite version going into the end of this year and to early 2024. The promise of using that SpaceX constellation is that you'd be able to have a, a device connect from literally anywhere on the planet and it would be able to send uh, decent amounts of IoT data. I'm talking about megabytes here and uh, in near real time. So almost giving you um, cell connectivity type performance from a satellite product, which is I'm really excited about. And then the other um, design that we're busy having a look at right now is where, how do we get the cost down on the Hawk based product? It is a it's a great device. It's got a lot of features built into it. Um, often specific use cases don't need all those features. So it's something we're debating internally, bringing out a lower cost um, version of the Hawk that is just designed for primary batteries. Obviously, that would leverage off the Hawk 2D housing that we're doing as well. You would have noticed from some of the things that we're changing is that we're, we're reacting to what we're hearing from the market and what customers are asking for us. So I really um, encourage you to give us your feedback. Tell us what you're doing with the Hawk. Um, and we would really love to showcase and do some PR with you around the solutions that you're putting together using the Hawk. Uh, we also welcome any comments, suggestions, any special requirements, please let us know. We've set up an internal uh, distribution list that you can use, hawk at digitalmatter.com. Uh, please feel free to email through your comments, suggestions, anything that you want to let us know about. And lastly, from my side, thanks very much for listening. Um, you know, the Hawk is one of our products that uh, we're really excited about, and we hope uh, that you're able to use it in your business and share our excitement in terms of where we're going with the product. Thank you for listening.